In this lecture, we'll talk about the characteristic equation, which we use to find the eigenvalues of a matrix. Remember that lambda is an eigenvalue of a if and only if the equation a minus lambda i times the vector x equals the vector 0 has a non-trivial solution. And that's going to happen if and only if the matrix a minus lambda i is singular, in other words, non-invertible. And that will happen if and only if the determinant of that matrix a minus lambda i equals 0. So let's look at an example to see how this would work out. So if this is the matrix A, then the matrix A minus lambda I, well, we take A, which is 2, 3, 3, negative 6. I, remember, is the diagonal matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. And when we subtract those, what we get is 2 minus lambda, 3, 3, and then negative 6 minus lambda. So we're going to take the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix, leaving lambda as a variable, and set that determinant equal to 0. That's going to give us an equation that, when we solve it, will give us the eigenvalues that we're looking for. So the determinant of this matrix, a minus lambda i. Remember that when we find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, we take these diagonal products and subtract them. So in this case, that's going to give us 2 minus lambda times negative 6 minus lambda minus 3 times 3. Now we're going to multiply this out. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, 2 times minus lambda is minus 2 lambda, minus lambda times minus 6 is plus 6 lambda, and then plus lambda squared, minus 9, that's going to give us lambda squared, plus 4 lambda, minus 21. When we set that equal to 0, that's quadratic, we can factor it, we get lambda plus 7 times lambda minus 3, that gives us two solutions, lambda equals negative 7, lambda equals 3. So those are the eigenvalues of this matrix. Now, if what we wanted in addition to this was corresponding eigenvectors, we would solve the equation a minus 3i times x equals 0, and the equation a minus negative 7i times x equals 0. And we would solve those in the normal way, the way that we solve matrix equations. So a little bit of terminology here. So when we take the determinant of a minus lambda i, leaving lambda as a variable, what we get is called the characteristic polynomial of A. It's always going to be a polynomial, and the degree of that polynomial is always going to be the size of that square matrix A. When we set that characteristic polynomial equal to zero, the equation that we get is called the characteristic equation of that matrix A. And the solutions to that characteristic equation, which are really just the roots of the characteristic polynomial, those are the eigenvalues of the matrix A that we're looking for. Okay, let's do another example, this time with a 3 by 3 matrix. So now when we take a minus lambda i, remember all we're really doing is subtracting lambda from the diagonal entries. So that's going to give us the matrix 1 minus lambda, 2, negative 1, 0, negative lambda, 2, 0, 1, 1 minus lambda. Now we have to take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix, and as we learned a while back, that can be a little bit annoying. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose to go down the first column of this matrix because that column has a couple of zeros in it. So using our 3 by 3 determinant technique, what we get is that the determinant of a minus lambda i is this entry, 1 minus lambda, multiplied by the 2 by 2 determinant, negative lambda, 2, 1, 1 minus lambda. That's going to give us 1 minus lambda, and then we're going to take that 2 by 2 determinant negative lambda times 1 minus lambda minus 2 times 1. Inside those parentheses, we get lambda squared minus lambda minus 2. Now, we could multiply this out, but remember, the goal here is to set this characteristic polynomial equal to 0 and solve. And the more we have that polynomial factored, the better. So in this case, we have our 1 minus lambda factored out. We want to leave it factored out. And then we can factor lambda squared minus lambda minus 2 as lambda minus 2 times lambda plus 1. That gives us three eigenvalues, lambda equals 1, lambda equals 2, and lambda equals negative 1. Let's do another example. This time we have a 4 by 4 matrix. But remember, a minus lambda i just means to subtract lambda from all of the diagonal entries. So a minus lambda i is this matrix, 1 minus lambda, 3, negative 6, 1, 0, 4 minus lambda, 
10, 0, 0, 0. 4 minus lambda, 5, 0, 0, 0, negative lambda. Now, taking a 4 by 4 determinant may seem intimidating at first, but good news here is that this is a triangular matrix, and finding the determinant of a triangular matrix, as we learned, is just as easy as taking the product of all of the diagonal entries of that triangular matrix. So in this case, the determinant is actually pretty easy. The determinant of a minus lambda i is just going to be the product 1 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, negative lambda. And again, we could multiply all that out, but that would be completely counterproductive. The goal here is to set this polynomial equal to 0 and solve. And so this being in factored form is exactly what we want. So what we get is lambda equals 1, lambda equals 4, lambda equals 4, lambda equals 0. Now notice here that we get the eigenvalue 4 twice. The factor 4 minus lambda appears twice in the factored form of our characteristic equation. So we say here that the eigenvalue 4 has multiplicity 2, because it shows up twice as a root of that characteristic polynomial. In this case, we expect our 4 by 4 matrix to have 4 eigenvalues, because our characteristic polynomial has degree 4, and so we expect that polynomial to have 4 roots. And in a sense, this polynomial does have four roots, but only if we count the root four twice. Let's go back to a smaller example and see something else that can happen sometimes. So in this case, a minus lambda i is the matrix negative lambda, negative one, one lambda. And when we take the determinant of a minus lambda i, what we get is lambda squared plus one. Now, when we set this characteristic polynomial equal to zero, there are two ways to think about what happens. One way is to say that there are no solutions. It's not possible to square a number, add one, and get zero. But really what we mean when we say no solutions is we mean that there are no real solutions. There are solutions, they're just complex numbers. If we subtract one from both sides and take the square root of both sides, what we get is that lambda is plus or minus i, where i is the square root of negative 1. So there are complex solutions, and so the question then becomes, do we allow complex numbers to be eigenvalues or not? For the moment, in this course, we're not going to allow complex eigenvalues, but we could. We could broaden our horizons and open ourselves up to the possibility of complex eigenvalues, and then think about what the consequences of that decision would be. And that Take, would take us on a whole other rabbit trail, but it's something to think about. So, but again, for our purposes, we're not going to allow complex eigenvalues. All right, now we want to talk about some general facts about these eigenvalues. One thing that we know from our discussion about determinants is that the determinant of the product of two matrices is the product of the determinants. And one consequence of that is that if you have an invertible matrix, then the determinant of the inverse is the reciprocal of the determinant. So let's think about why that is. Well, the determinant of a times a inverse, there's two ways to think about that. Because the determinant of a product is the product of the determinants, that's the determinant of a times the determinant of a inverse. But it's also the determinant of the identity matrix, because a times a inverse is the identity matrix. And the identity matrix has a determinant of 1. So if I divide both sides by the determinant of a, I get exactly what we said in the claim, that the determinant of A inverse is in fact 1 over the determinant of A. Now we see that two square matrices A and B of the same size are similar, that A is similar to B, if there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. Now for the moment, not sure what we're going to do with this definition, but just try to understand the definition itself, and then we're going to use this a lot uh, for the rest of this lecture and then in the next lecture. So is there a matrix, an invertible matrix, so that when I take A and multiply it on the left by P inverse, and on the right by P, what I get is a matrix B. Notice that the P and the P inverse generally won't cancel each other out, because matrix multiplication is not commutative. I can't swap the places of the A and the P to cancel out the p inverse and the p, because I can't change the order typically with matrix multiplication. So we're not saying that a and b are going to be equal here. We're just saying that they're going to be, in some sense, similar, and we're going to get into what that means. 
But first of all, notice that if A is similar to B, then we can do the same thing switching the roles of B and A. Because if I take the equation and multiply both sides by P on the left and P inverse on the right, what I get is P, B, P inverse. And notice that this P and P inverse, since they're next to each other, that's just the identity. This P and P inverse, since they're next to each other, that's the identity. And so we get A. So this would tell me that A equals P, B, P inverse. Now that doesn't immediately tell me that B is similar to A, because I would have to have the inverse of a matrix on the left and the matrix itself on the right. But we can just let Q be P inverse. Then P is Q inverse, and P inverse is Q, so this would show that B is similar to A. So if A is similar to B, then the similarity matrix, the P, we can just invert that and use that matrix to show that B is similar to A. So we'll often just say that A and B are similar to each other, but without this little proof that we did here, that wouldn't have been quite precise. This theorem shows us something that we can do with similar matrices, which is to note that if A and B are similar matrices, then these two matrices have the exact same characteristic polynomial, and that means that they would have to have the same eigenvalues with the same multiplicities. And so all we have to do is show that the characteristic polynomials are the same. In other words, we have to show that the determinant of A minus lambda i is equal to the determinant of B minus lambda i. So we know that since A is similar to B, that B equals P inverse AP for some invertible matrix P. So we set this up. We've got the determinant of B minus lambda I. We're going to replace B by what it equals, which is P inverse AP. Now the identity matrix and any multiple of the identity matrix commutes with any other matrix. So here we're going to write I as I times P times P inverse, because multiplying by P and by P inverse doesn't do anything. And then we're going to switch up the order. And then we're just going to multiply by lambda. So if I multiply by lambda here, again, with scalar multiples in matrix multiplication, we can kind of put the scalar wherever we want. And the advantage of doing this is that now we have a p inverse on the left of both of these terms and a p on the right of both of these terms, which means we can factor. We can factor out the p inverse and factor out the p. And what we get in the middle is an a minus lambda i. Now, because the determinant of a product is the product of determinants, we can break this up into three separate determinants. The determinant of P inverse, the determinant of A minus lambda I, and the determinant of P. Now, the determinant of P inverse, that's one over the determinant of P, and that means that this determinant and this determinant are reciprocals of each other, so they cancel each other out. And so we just get the determinant of A minus lambda I. So for two matrices to be similar, the only way that could happen is if they had the exact same characteristic polynomial and the exact same eigenvalues with the exact same multiplicities. And as we're going to see, the way that we're going to use similarity is we're going to replace a given matrix A by what is going to be, in some sense, a better matrix B, but it's going to be a similar matrix, but it'll be a similar matrix, and so that when we replace A by this new matrix B, we'll keep the same characteristic polynomial, we'll keep the same eigenvalues in those multiplicities. The vectors involved might change, but the eigenvalues themselves will stay the same.